Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem which is part of Recode Daily Challenge. So the problem asks us to do the greatest common divisor of two strings. So we have S and T and um, we have the concept where T divides S if and if only S is a series of concatenation of T. So basically um, concatenating a s some value with itself multiple times gives us that string. And what the problem asks us to do is we get two strings and we want to return the largest string that divides both. And that's where, where we have the concept here of common divisor. Um, but we want the largest possible string. Okay. So if we take a look at the, this example here with these two strings, well, um, we can just do ABC because it's a concatenation once here and twice here, right? With the second example, we can do we can do AB AB because then we would have something like this, and and the second we'd have AB not is not a concaten is not a AB AB right, so that's not possible. But we can do just AB because then we have two concatenated here and we have three concatenated here, so it should work. Um, with two strings like lead and code here, they are different, right? Um, there is no common string, and so in that case, we just want to return an empty string. In terms of constraint here, we have 1000, which may basically tells us that an oven solution should work. Oven squared should be able to pass as well. Um, okay, so let's see how we can solve it. Um, okay, so how do we solve it? So the problem says that we get um, x, which is going to be equal to t plus t plus uh, t, right? So the thing to notice here is that, well, let's try all the pre let's just try all the possible uh, possibilities, right? And we don't need to try substrings, we just need to try prefixes. Why is that? Because it's literally the value is of each string should be a concatenation. So here S1, S2. So it should be a concatenation of it. So if it's AB, then it needs to be AB first in the prefix, and then another AB, and then another AB. So the, X, uh, the uh, T value is always starts at the prefix, right? Because it needs to be the entire thing needs to be a concatenation of T, right? And so that means just let's try all the prefixes. That's the idea here. So try prefixes. And the thing is, we need to try the prefixes just of one of them. We don't need to try with both, right? We can just pick a prefix from, just fix one of the strings, let's say S1, and just pick a prefix. So pick first the smallest one, for example, and s check if um, if this one is um, just a concatenation of it, if S2 is equal to T plus T, so this would be our T uh, plus T. In this case, no, because it's not A, 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 right? And so it's not, so we try and, uh, of course, we check also if it's a concatenation for uh, S1, and it's not, because the first thing we find is B different. Um, and so we try a larger sub uh, prefix, A, B, um, that's not the the case either for, that's not a, a, a divider of S2 and not a divider of S1. So we try a bigger one. So we try ABC and that's actually a divider of S2 because it's one concatenation and it's a divider of S1 because it's two concatenations. And so this one is, um, is um, the, the large, uh, this one is a, is a divider. So we have potentially um, our t is potentially equal to abc, but we need to find the largest, so we keep going, and we try here, this one is not, we try here, and you notice something here, there is no use in trying anymore, because this is bigger than the length of s2, so it will never be the case, right? But the other thing also to mention, even if s, let's say, was bigger, let's say maybe we had s2 was like this, right? It's it's better for us to try from the largest length first, right? Because if we do that, we don't have to keep checking once we find a, a candidate divisor, because when we find, if we try the longest one first and then try the second one, the first one we find is the solution, right? And so that's also something to keep in mind. Um, now, the other thing here is that since we are doing prefixes and we need them to be divisible for each, it's better to try the shorter ter strings, string, right? Because if we try the um, the larger string, we have the thing where once we get here, if we tr there is no need to try this one because it will never be a solution. And so it's better to try the, the smallest one because if we find a valid prefix for both, 
the first one should be the solution, right? Because it's valid for S2, it's valid for S1. So try all prefixes and use smallest uh, length of S1 and S2. So that's the one we'll use to just pick the prefixes of it. Um, okay, so those are a couple of observations there. Another, um, another observation is also um, if the length of the prefix does not divide the length of the string that means it's not a, it's not a valid candidate it's, it can be t what do i mean by that so here for example the length is six and here the length is three right so for us a prefix of length two for example that can never be a divisor for s2 because well you would have the first sub let's say ab you would have the first substring be ab but then you have one letter and that letter can never be the prefix right and so um, that's also another observation is basically for t a T candidate, right? Let's say the length is uh, L, right? Length of T, right? So if basically N1, which is the length of S1, is not divisible by L or the length of uh, S2 is not divisible by L, that means not possible. It's not a valid candidate, right? And with this, I think we should be able to solve the problem, right? We can just choose the smallest one of these and try all the prefixes going from longer, uh, sorry, we are picking the smallest one, going from the longest to the shorter one. And the first time we find one that divides both, um, we can just return x, right? And by ch how do we check divide both? Well, we can just make sure that first, the l this is not happening because otherwise it's not divisible. Otherwise, we have the length of t. We know it's the prefix of S1, S2, sorry, the smallest one, which is S2 here. So we can just pick the, that means our x is just um, this, subs the prefix up to uh, t, which is the length we are trying, right? And then we can just check, is x, so we can check if uh, x multiplied by the, l the number of occurrences of the pre prefix x, what's that? That's just the length divided by L, right? Because this is the prefix. We want to check how many times it occurred in N1. So we just get the divide the length. We get the length, the, the number of occurrences, right? Basically, we have, let's say, uh, these occurrences of L, right? And this is N1, right? Let's say this is 2, 2. What this tells you is, and the length of, um, of N, let's say maybe it's 6. So this tells you that 6 divided by 3, that you have 3 portions of x, right? So that's why we are doing this here. So we'll multiply x by n1 divided by l and make sure this is equal to s1. And just check that also x um, n2 divided by l is also equal to s2. And that's pretty much it. I, or we can check also if this is not the case, then we continue. And so that the last condition is basically... Um, guaranteed that x is a valid um, uh, common divisor, right? Um, so that's pretty much the idea here. Now let's code it and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so let's code this solution up. So what we need is first we, we said we want to uh, just have the length of the two strings. So this one is the length of s1. Let me just rename these to s1, and this one to s2, and we need the length of s2. Right, um, and then we, um, as I said, we want S one. We want to guarantee that S one is smallest one. This is just basically to make it easier uh, for us to um, to to check always the smallest string. Um, and so, if I'm just going to guarantee uh, that S one is always the smallest one, so N one and two and or we can guarantee that S two is the smallest one, whichever you want. I will go with S one for now. Um, and then we return self dot, we just call this again with the, so this is if it's bigger, so that we guarantee it's the smallest one. Um, we pass S2, S1, and this will basically make sure the first parameter is always the smallest one. Okay, so now we can do our um, actual algorithm. So we will just say the length, uh, and we want to say go in decreasing order, as we said, so that as soon as we find it, we can return it. We start out with the full length prefix. And we go until zero, which tells us um, only one one letter, um, and we do we decrement by minus one each time. Okay, 
And now we want to check if it's the first condition that we mentioned in the overview, which is if it's not divisible, then that means it's not a solution. And this is for either S1 or S2. So if it's not divisible, we can just go to the next length and try it, right? The other condition is if um, we actually try, so what is X? X is just the prefix of S1, right, of length L. So we can just try and see multiplied by what's what's are the number of um, concatenations for S1? Well, we said it's just N1 divided by L. If this is different than S1, that means it's not a solution, right? So if you have A, B, C, um, and you try to concatenate it by the number of time, the number of copies you need, and it's not equal, let's say maybe you have um, something like this, okay? So let's say you have A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, D, right? So we determined that, that we need three copies of, let's say X is equal to A, B, C. We determined that we need three copies, right? But we need to check actually if they are all equal. And so we do ABC multiplied by three copies that we said this is where this returns us. And this gives us ABC, ABC, ABC. And then we need to check that it's actually equal to S1. In this case, it won't be. If it was C here, it will, right? And so that's why we do this. And we do a similar thing for S2. And so divided by L. This is different than S2. And then if this is the case, we want to skip and try the next length, the next shorter length. But otherwise, if these two conditions are not happening, that means it's actually equal and the length is actually divisible. And so this is the solution. And since we went from the biggest to largest, we know this is the largest one. So we return it. Now, if we don't find a solution, we go through the loop and each time we kept getting that it's not a solution, that means it's similar to our third example here, and we just need to return an empty string. And so that's what we do here, return empty string. Um, yeah, so here we actually need or, because if either one is not, um, is, doesn't match, then we should return, then we should go to the next length, right? So even if S matched, and let's say S2 was A, B, C, A, B, D, if the S2 doesn't match, we should continue to the next length, right? So let's try this. And now let's submit, and this passes, right? Um, now, in terms of time complexity, we are doing only one loop here, right? So it's O of N. And yeah, and this is just calls the same function once. It calls it only once because once we pass the smallest one, we are done, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for today's problem. Please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one. Bye.